The first reading is from uh, the book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 to 24. Um, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in one who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are for the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and we know everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask. Because before God, oh my bad, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment. Do, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has committed us. All who obey his com uh, commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. Word of God, word of life. Uh, the second one is from the book of John, chapter 10, verses 16, 11 through 16. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The third hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees a wolf coming and leaves his sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches, snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong in this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so they will be one flock, one shepherd. Word of God, word of life. Good job, Julio. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different uh, this morning. I spoke with the high school uh, students a few weeks ago and I asked them this question. Um, what have I learned about God from my mom? Uh, and so we're going to have a few testimonies, and if, if there, we have room for one or two others, if anybody else feels the Spirit and want to share what you've learned about God from your mom, uh, there will be space to share that as well. But we have some high school kids that are going to share that stories, uh, their stories. I'm going to invite Jacob to lead us off. Let's welcome Jacob. Hello, everyone. A while ago, a sermon was given, and the sermon was about the keeper of the springs. Everyone gets to enjoy the crystal clean water, the mill wheels being turned by the water, and the beautiful swans floating in the stream. But who is clearing the, out the water, keeping it clean, and getting rid of all the leaves and the dirt at the spring? That is how my mother and some other mothers work in their lives. She works like a ninja in the dark and sits back as my life improves without taking any credit. I can tell my mom loves me to the moon and back, and I have nothing but similar feeling towards her. I found a quote to Hannah that kind of tells about how I could retell her back. And this quote is actually by Tupac. There's no way I can pay you back, but my plan is to show you that I understand you are appreciated. Thanks, mom, I love you. Um, <clears throat> so my mom uh, taught me about God by her showing her love for me no matter what happens in life. Um, I know that she will always be there for me no matter what, and that right there, sh it, there is showing her love and God's love for me every single day. Um, I couldn't ask for a better mom than her. I know that I'm so young, and there is still a lot that she can teach me about God as life goes on. So I'm thankful for her, and I just want to say that I love her with all my heart. And I know that she's not here right now and she can't hear me see this in person, but that's what makes her such an amazing mom, is that she's spreading her love and God's love in Mexico to others who don't get this every day. So thank you and happy Mother's Day to every mother. Okay, so how my mom has introduced God into my life my mom has showed me that God exists in many different ways. 
When she prays with me, she asks God to give us peace and strength through hard times. This always comforts me and helps me through difficult times. My mom is actually the one who introduced me to church, and if it weren't for that, I would not be as close to God as I am now. Through my mom's example and her words about God, these are some things that I believe about God from her. I didn't believe in God much in the past like I do now. I also believe that God has a plan for everyone. But I do not believe in destiny, and I believe that we set our own path and we have full control over our day-to-day decisions in life in general. For instance, I don't believe that things such as sickness and cancer are part of God's plan for any specific person. I believe that God gives the strongest people the biggest challenges in life. And I also believe that the power of prayer, in the power of prayer, and I think that it's very helpful when I'm faced with struggles. I also felt like God was near me and protected me after me and a couple of friends survived the dangerous situation one summer ago. I feel like my life has been enriched now that I have a belief and connection with God, and I believe He is always watching over me. Love you, Mom. First, I want to start by recognizing a mother's role and the fact that being a mother is a full-time job with no days off. On this special day and every other day, I want to thank my mother and every mother for their hard work and dedication. Thank you for always being there when I needed, when I needed and for committing to a full-time role of being a mother. Thank you for being my rock even through, the shares, through our shares of ups and downs. Despite that, you have always been there for me. Thank you for teaching me God's love. Thank you for encouraging me when I did not believe in myself. Thank you for teaching me that God is always there for me and shines a light during the darkest times. I want to share two quotes with you um, by Sarah and James. The first one is, mothers are like glue. Even when you can't see them, they're still there holding the family together. The second one is, the influence of a mother in the lives of the child is beyond calculation. So mom, thank you for being my glue. Thank you for raising me to the young woman I am today. And thank you for raising me with God's words. (laughs) Pastor Paul walked up to me right before the service and said, Go up there and say what you have to say. I had nothing prepared, so I'll make up something right now on the spot. (laughs) I consider my mom like the light of the household. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't wake up in the morning and come to church. I don't really see God besides through her. So I come up there and I say, I love you, Mom. Would anybody else like to share uh, what you've learned from your mom? before we invite Noah up, does anybody else want to share? No, you can, I just want to make sure anyone else has a chance to share too. Daniel, you want to say anything? Oh, here we go. Thank you. Very good. Here we go. So I want to share with my mom how I feel about her. Um, she took me to church every Sunday and gave me the faith that I have. Um, I'm adopted, actually, and um, I think actually of Joseph when I think of, um, of my relationship and how Joseph took on the, the task of raising a child that, that was not actually his, and he took on that responsibility, and he did it with grace and dignity, and I think of my mom when I think of that, um, always believed in me, encouraged me to follow my dreams and to be strong. She encouraged me to, um, to sing, and which is my passion, and was always supportive of that. And mom, you are still the wind beneath my wings. We've got room for one more before I invite Noah up. Anybody else want to share? <laughs> Come on, Noah. Okay. Let's welcome Noah. So uh, as my mother would say, the best predictor of future behavior is uh, past behavior. So again, I procrastinated on this and didn't actually prepare anything. But uh, (laughs) uh, either way, uh, my mom over the past few weeks has shown me immense strength. And that's really just all I can say about her. She is 
throughout my whole life has been my rock and is always there for me. And I know that because I'm always there for her. And even though sometimes you might not always have who you want with you, uh, I'm there. So, and I know she shows me immense strength and she shows me God. And that's really all I could ask for in a mother. And you know, she gives me money for gas too, which is kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> so overall, really, she's just the best mom I could have ever asked for. And even though it's hard sometimes, she, uh, she shows strength and she gets through it all and we all get through it. So I guess happy Mother's Day, mom. I love you. Here comes Noel. Okay, so that last one made me cry just a little bit, so I'm probably going to cry. But, um, so a year ago, I wrote my confirmation essay on how breast cancer saved my mom's life, and I'm already starting to cry a little bit, so. Um, and I wrote that on how God works in mysterious ways, and that is what I've learned from my mom about God, is that God works in mysterious ways. And now I just want to take a second and thank my mom because my mother is the most amazing person I know and will continue to be that for the rest of my life. She is everything I, <laughs> she is everything I want to be in the future, minus the cancer. Um, she, <laughs> she is kind, thoughtful, confident, and thankful for everything that comes up in her life. She is also unbelievably strong, so strong, I can't even begin to tell you what she goes through and how she goes through with a smile on her face. I wouldn't want anybody else in the world to be my mom. Sorry. Um, I couldn't even imagine that. And there have been times, <laughs> there have been times in my life when I had to think about that. And I just know I'd be so lost. And with that, I want to say thank you, Mom. I don't say it enough, but I'm tremendously thankful for you. I love you. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. God is good all the time. Today is not only Mother's Day, it's also Good Shepherd Sunday, and I'm just going to do a, sort of a very short uh, little sermonito. Um, and I want to start out by uh, asking you to, in, in your little groups, I want to ask you a question. Uh, this is sort of like a job interview question. I love job interview questions. And if you, this is the question. If you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? So just uh, talk amongst your little group. And uh, what, if you were an animal, what animal would you be and why? All right, we'll start over here. Thank you. Uh, what do we have over here? What animals do we got over here? Tur who said turtle? What, why Turtle. They're cool, a cool, too, curl, the turtle's cool. Any, anyone over here? Any other animals? What do you got? No, any, any other, no animals? Okay, no animals over here. Humans, they chose humans. Okay, <laughs> animal over here, what do, we, what do we choose? Liliana, what did you choose? A unicorn, all right, okay. Why a unicorn? They're pretty cool, yeah? We're, there's a coolness theme going on. One, others over here? Daniel, what'd you choose? A chameleon. We're getting the, these are all unique. The fourth service and there's the first chameleon, the first turtle, and the first unicorn. Why a chameleon? Yeah, you blend in with stuff. There's some power in being a, yeah, you can sort of like uh, be a, uh, that's cool. What else we got? JJ? An eagle. That's our second eagle. That's great. Why? Fly around, yeah. Be, uh, over here, anybody else over here? A dolphin, our first dolphin, why? Smart, loyal, and protective, very good. Michael, what do we got? A sloth. <laughs> That's our first sloth. <laughs> why a sloth? Oh, <laughs> just kind of, that's right. Very good. Others over here? You want to, oh, your dad, okay. Uh, Lindsay, 
A cat. How many cats do we have? How many people want to be cats? How about dogs? Yeah? Dogs are loyal, right? And any other animals over here? Kim? Dogs. You're dog people. Okay, very good. A bear. Yeah. <laughs> JJ is a new uh, second time daddy now. We uh, give thanks for uh, JJ. Any other animals over here? A giraffe. We've been getting giraffes lately. Very good. How many? Nobody chose sheep. If you actually went to a job interview and said, uh, I would be a sheep, you probably are not going to get the job, right? Right? Sheep are uh, vulnerable weak, right? Um, and we know all too often with, uh, we know of Cindy's story, how life can be, uh, uh, our lives are vulnerable, right? Um, we don't like to think of ourselves as sheep, as vulnerable and weak and totally helpless and dependent. We like to think of ourselves as being eagles that fly or bears that are strong. Guess what? I, my animal is the lion because I'm a Leo and I like to be the king of the jungle. That's why I'm a pastor, right? Um, to fully appreciate and give thanks for Good Shepherd Sunday, the first thing I think we have to do is to come into terms with our own inner sheep, you know, to get to terms with ourselves as inner sheep. And as much as we want to, as our moms and our dads want to care for our kids and protect them and keep them safe, um, even from a young age, we know that uh, our lives can become fragile uh, in a second, and life can turn in a second, and we can become very uh, uh, vulnerable. And there are tons and tons of vulnerable people in the world. Do you know how many uh, people go hungry each night in the world? About 800 million. 800 million. About half of those or more are in war-torn countries, and you can think of the uh, tens, if not hundreds of millions that, of children that go to bed hungry every night. Our lives are fragile. Um, on Holy Thursday, we were going to do an amazing foot washing service in Shannon, and uh, we helped uh, get everything ready, right? And we uh, prepared uh, the service to, to wash disciples' feet. And people came forward, and uh, we had a picture. And this is a beautiful picture made by Roy Schrader, uh, one of our uh, longtime disciples here at New Song Church. And uh, I, it took me about five minutes to get down on the ground, but I finally got it on the ground and uh, picked up this pitcher filled with water, and guess what happened? It snapped and broke. Uh, we are indeed sheep that are vulnerable, and we can become like clay pots, and we're easily broken, both materially and spiritually, right? Uh, how many of us moms and dads uh, do our best to put food on the table? do our best to provide love and care for our children and have so much stress and pressure on our backs to just get through each day, um, that can have an effect on our spiritual lives, I think, in a deep and profound way. Sheep are also dumb. So uh, if you went in your job interview, and I, I'm a sheep because I'm kind of stupid, right? Nobody picks sheep because we don't like to think of ourselves as dumb, but sheep are easily lost right? Uh, they'll kind of follow the grass, and before they'll look up, they're eating grass, and they'll find out that they're totally uh, lost, and they cannot find their way back home. You could pick a pigeon would be a good thing. A pigeon, uh, you know, in the Bronx, they have these uh, pigeon clubs, and they, they, have, they train these pigeons, and they fly all over the place, and they'll all come back and land back uh, on the rooftop of where they've been trained, or dogs, right? Dogs can... Uh, be lost hundreds of miles away, away and eventually find their way home. But sheep are just kind of uh, helpless. Paul was telling me, didn't you, didn't you try to steal some sheep the other day? <laughs> yeah, he was, he was uh, you know, he made a sound. Now here's the thing. The one thing that sheep have that's vital to themselves and to their life and their well-being, the one thing that's God-given it's not their brains, it's not their muscles, but it's their ears. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and my sheep can hear my voice. My sheep can hear my voice. And uh, 
in truth, each one of us will find ourselves lost in this world at one point or another. Some of us are feeling lost at this very moment today. Jesus, unlike the hired hand, is invested in you. Jesus is invested in each one of us, so when he finds ourselves lost, he is going to do everything he can to try to find you and to speak your name and to say, Cynthia, Naomi. And the sheep can hear their voice. And how we know this is the, 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 the shepherd, I always say, like, as moms, uh, how many of us moms, we love our kids? Yes? Uh, do you, you kind of have to love your kids? That's kind of like one of the rules that you have to love your kids. Now, let's see if we have any honest moms. Are there any times when you love your kid, but you don't really like them? Yeah? <laughs> Here's the thing about God. God not only loves you, but God likes you. What, what I mean by that is that there's something uniquely about you that draws God to you. There's something that God loves specifically about you. And as he's looking at uh, building his church and he's building, uh, thinking about the, the sheepfold and, 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 and the community of believers, he's saying, you know what? I need Stephanie on my team. I need each one of you uniquely. There's something that Jesus loves specifically about you, Julio, that he wants to be part of his mission and his ministry. And we know how deeply he loves each one of us because he is willing, unlike the rest of us, I have to say this is the first uh, service that nobody picked sheep. Did anybody pick sheep at all? Anybody? None of us picked sheep, right? I don't want to be thought of as stupid or vulnerable or weak. I want to be strong. And I resist anything that's going to have to make me bow down. And yet, that's exactly what Jesus does on his way to the cross, as he himself becomes the sheep. He himself becomes vulnerable and in the world's eyes weak as he lets all the evil come onto him as he goes to the cross. But in that transformation from shepherd to sheep, he transforms us from sheep to shepherd because he says there are people out there, 800 million hungry right now, people that are in the pits of darkness and despair, and I need you to go out there and find them and love them and bring them home to my sheepfold. And so today on Mother's Day, uh, all of us can give thanks for the moms and how they have taught us a little bit about God's love, even as imperfectly as they've done it. We know all our moms do the best we can. But we know that our Lord and Savior Jesus is our good shepherd and loves us through all things. Amen. Trusting God's promise of new life, we pray for the renewal, for the renewal of the church the world, and of all creation. Shine your light through this in every congregation. Reveal to us the light of your salvation in places of hopelessness and decay. Anoint us and make us overflow with goodness. We give thanks for gentle rains that nourish green pasture and rejuvenate rivers and streams. Provide clean water for thirsty people, animals, and crops. Heal places suffering destruction caused by floods, typhoons, storms, and mudslides. Empower authorities to be faithful shepherds who lead nations in pathways of righteousness and peace especially. Disrupt and deter the work of terrorists, religious, and political extremists, and all who would choose the way of violence or the way of mercy. Give strength and perseverance to those facing struggles of hunger or thirst, unemployment or homelessness, chronic illnesses or anxiety. Be our never-failing voice of, of comfort through all the trials of life. 
Raise up faithful women as witnesses to your strength and compassion. Bless mothers and all who offer mothering care. Protect victims of sexism, abuse, and gender-based violence. Restore dignity to those marginalized because of their gender, identity, or sexual orientation. Salvation belongs to you, O God. You promise to wipe away every tear. Give us the assurance that all who live to and die in you will rest forever beside the river of life. We commend this all our prayers to you, O God. Come near to us with your saving help for the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen.